Hello, today we are going to read Judy P. Jones is a Graduation Girl by Barbara Park, illustrated by Denise Bunkus. We're going to do this in parts, so part one will be chapters one to five, and part two, which is coming out soon, will be chapters five to nine. Okay, if you like part one, you can listen to part two. Here we go. Chapter one, the month of June. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. I was named after the month of Junie, because Junie is the month I was born in, of course. And wait till you hear this. Yesterday, I finally had my birthday, and now I am six years old. That day was like magic, I tell you. Because on Saturday, right when I went to bed, I was only five years old. And the next morning, boom, I was six. Here's a picture of Junie B. Jones eating cake at her birthday party. She looks pretty happy there, doesn't she? Okay. My grandma Helen Miller had a happy birthday party for me. She invited my mother and daddy and my grandpa Frank Miller. Also, she invited my baby, my baby brother named Ollie. He is seven months old. He did not add that much. I loved my party a very lot. First, I loved my chocolatey cake with white icing. Next, I loved my strawberry ice cream. Plus also, I loved my balloons and my funny birthday hats and all my happy birthday cards, but mostly. I loved my presents! I got five entire boxes to open, and good news, none of them was clothes. Mostly, I got toys and games. Also, I got a tool belt just my size. Plus, my grandpa Miller gave me my very own plumbing supplies to help fix the toilet. But that is not even the end of all my excitement. Because that night, when Mother tucked me into bed, she reminded me that I am graduating from kindergarten on Friday. My stomach felt jumpy inside when she said that. I quick counted on my fingers. But Friday is only five more days, I said. I did a gulp. That, even, that event sneaked right up on us, didn't it? I said, kind of nervous. Mother hugged me. You're not worried, are you, Ginny B? She asked. Graduation will be fun, I promise. And you're going to love first grade. But Polly Allen Puffer says that next year everything will be different, I said. He says that first grade won't have the same kids as room nine does, and so all of our classmates will be weirdo strangers. Mother did a frown. No, 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 that's not true, she said. I'm sure you'll know a lot of children in your class next year, Ginny B. But even if your best friends aren't in your room, you will still be able to play with them at recess, right? I nodded my head kind of slow. Yes, I guess so, I said. Plus, Polly Allen Puffer says that we will be the boss of all the kindergarten kids. So that will be fun, probably. And also, he says our brains and feet will double in size. Mother stared at me a real long time. Then that Polly Allen Puffer is a fountain of knowledge. He said very quiet. After that, we talk some more about graduation in first grade. And here's a picture of Junie B's mother kissing her on the head, and Junie B still looking pretty worried. And guess what? Next day at school, my teacher talked about it even more. Her name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. clapped her hands real happy. Well, this is it, boys and girls, she said. Graduation week is finally here. At 7 o'clock on Friday evening, room 8 and room 9 will have our graduation ceremony together. And of course, the children in morning kindergarten will be graduating too. So every single one of you will, will, will receive a diploma. I springed out of my chair real slow. A diploma! A diploma! I will love a diploma! I said. I shouted. Then I did a teensy frown. It's not co close, correct? I asked. A meanie boy named Jim laughed real. Ha! You garny, goony bird Jones! You don't even know what a diploma is! He said. I stamped my foot at that boy. Yes, I do too, Jim! I said. I know perfectly well what it is, but I am not even the teacher here, and so I will let her explain it to the class. I sat down and smoothed my skirt. Then he pointed to Mrs. Okay, go. I said. Mrs. wrinkled her eyebrows at me. 
As I was about to say, a diploma is a very small pe- uh, is a very special piece of paper. A diploma is a certif- certificate that says you completed part of your education. And so, as you go through school, you'll get several diplomas. She said, but this one will be your first. I spring up again. And guess what else, Missus? I'm not even afraid of first grade anymore, because I'll be getting big feet and brains. Missus said, "Sit down." To me. Then she told us more about graduation. She said that we're, that as a treat for our families, we will be making them special graduation invitations, and so that will be our activity for the day. Yippee! I said, "I love making invitations, Missy, Missus." On account of that, does not even sound like learning. After that, I clapped and clapped, and all of room nine clapped with me, because graduation week was starting off like a charm. Tap, chapter two, rhymes. I sat at my table, very nice. Mrs. passed out colored paper for our invitations. Also, she passed out curly ribbon, and lace, and paste, and bottles of sparkly glitter. Just as a reminder, she said, we do not paste glitter in our eyebrows, and we do not put lace up our noses, and above all, we do not glue glue curly ribbon to our heads and pretend it is long hair. She looked and looked at me. I squirmed in my seat a little bit, because that woman has a memory like a hawk, I tell you. Finally, Mrs. went to the board, and she picked up her chalk. On the inside of our, car- of her car- of our cards, we are going to write a poem about graduation. Does anyone have any ideas for the first line? Uh, my friend named Grace waved her hand all around. Me. Roses are red! Roses are red! She called out. Yes! Hollered Room Nine. Roses are red! Mrs. smiled. She wrote it on the board for us. Okay, now what about the second line? She asked. Room Nine hollered in. Violets are blue! Violets are blue! Violets are blue! Mrs. wrote that line too. Very good, class, she said. Now who can think of the third line? Maybe we should try to mention something about graduation in this one? Does anyone have any ideas? A shy boy named William stood up next to his table. Graduation is here, he said kind of nervous. Mrs. grinned real bit. Excellent job, William, excellent. She printed it on the board. All right, there's just one more line to go, she said. Let's try to make the last word rhyme with the word blue, okay? She read the first three lines out to us. Roses are red, violets are blue, graduation is here. Room nine thought and thought. Then all of a sudden, rhymes started coming from all over the place. My dress will be new, called Lucille. My dad's name is Lou, called Jamal Hall. We made it! Woo-hoo, called Lenny. Just then, Polly Allen Pepper springed right out of his chair and started laughing his head off. The zoo is P-U! He shouted his loudest. Then all of her and my laughed at her heads off too. Ha 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 Because P-U is the silliest rhyme we ever heard, even heard of. Mrs. clapped her mad hands together. Boys and girls, that's enough, she grasped. She hurried to pull down Pepper's tail and she put him back in his seat. I do not appreciate that kind of behavior, young man, she said. We're trying to write a nice class poem, dear Polly Allen, and your rhyme was entirely inappropriate. After that, I tried to... St- Stop giggling. But that silly poem kept on staying inside my head. And then, out of nowhere, an even, another even funny poem popped right into my brain. And I couldn't even hold it inside me. I quick jumped up on my chair. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Graduation is here. And your feet smell like stink, I shouted. After that, room nine could not even control themselves again because that poem was the funniest thing they ever even heard of. My teacher's eyes got big and wide at me. Judy B. Jones, didn't you hear a word I just said? She said very annoyed. Then Mrs. hurried to my table and she took me into the hall and she pointed me straight to the office. Chapter three, a good chuckle. The office is where principal lives. I know my way there by heart. There was a typing lady there, too. She looked over the counter at me. Well, 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 would you look who it is, she said. I looked down at myself. Well, 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 it looks like me, I said, kind of quiet. The typing lady pointed at the blue chair. The blue chair is where bad kids sit. Only I'm not even bad, but I still have to sit there sometimes. I put my feet on the edge of the chair, and I hid my face in my 
If you don't hide, if you don't hide your face, people can recognize yourself. Finally, I peeked one eye at Principal's door. I guess what? That guy was looking right back at me. Is that Junie B. Jones I see out there? He asked. I did a gasp. <gasps> Cause, prin Cause Principal can even recognize me from an eyeball. Apparently, I went into his office and I sat in the big wood chair. Principal winked at me. I'm a little bit surprised to see you, Junie B. He said. You haven't been sent here for quite some time. I nodded. I know it, I said. That's because my behavior has, behavior has shown considerable improvement. I pronounced the words very perfect. My teacher printed those words on the report card. On my report card, I said, and guess what else? It, and guess what else? Showed improvement. My speaking, that's what. Because I don't say run anymore, and I don't say think, and I don't say throw. Do you want to hear me say them right? Huh? Do you, Principal? I took a big breath. Ran, 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 thought, 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 through, through, through. I said, I smile very proud. See, I told you, mother says I am getting a vet, a vet, a better vocab, vocabulary. I said, vocabulary, said principal. Whatever, I said. Principal smiled. Yes, well, I'm delighted with your improvements, Junie B, he said. But if everything has gotten better, then why are you here? I was in my chair, very uncomfortable. Because it wasn't my fault, that's why, I said. What wasn't your fault, said Principal. I wiggled some more. Then finally, I, took I told Principal about how my teacher made us write a graduation poem and how she said the last word has rhymed with blue. And so Polly Ellen Puffer rhymed the word P-U, I say. But then Mrs. got very mad at him because she did not appreciate his behavior, young man. Only too bad for me because my brain thought of an even sillier poem and my mouth couldn't hold it inside. Principal hold his, hold, closed his eyes. He did some deep breaths. All right, he said. Let's hear it. Then I, I gulped, very worried. Then I made my voice real soft. Horses are red. Violets are blue. Graduation is here. And your feet smell like stink. I said. <laughs> After that, Principal kept his eyes closed a real long time. And he did not say any words. Then very slow, he put his head down on his desk. And he started to laugh. His laughing got louder and louder. And so guess what? Then I started laughing too. That poem was a beaut, right, Principal? We are having ourselves a good chuckle over this, aren't we? Principal stopped la laughing very fast. He raised his head again. No, Junie B, no. We are not having a good chuckle, he said. I'm sorry. Your poem caught me completely by surprise. But I should have never laughed like that crossed his arms at me. You are right about one thing, he said. Your poem is definitely silly, but silly things are not always appropriate to say in the classroom, are they? The teacher made it clear that she didn't like what you, what Polly Allen Puffer had said, Junie B, but you called out your poem anyway. He made squinty eyes. And please, please, don't blame it on your mouth, okay? You know you could have held it inside. Here's a picture of Junie B. Jones and Principal Having a good chuckle, or what Junie B thinks is, is a good chuckle. I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know, I said kind of quiet. Maybe I could have. Principal tapped his fingers on his desk. Is it a, is it, it, it's a very serious matter to disobey a teacher, Junie B, he said. And I want you to sit here and think about just how serious it is. Can you do that, please? Yes, I said. I can. After that, I squeezed my eyes real tight, and I thought and thought. Finally, I opened my eyes again. Good news, I said. I've said my last stink. Principal nodded his head. That is good news, he said. Then he stood up and he held my hand and he walked me into the hall. It's been an interesting year getting to know you, Junie B. Jones, he said. You're a fan. You're a fa fan. <gasps> Fantastic little. Wait, what does it say? Fantastic little girl. Thank you, I said. You are a fan. Fantastic, too. After that, both of us waved goodbye, and I started skipping back to room nine. Then all of a sudden, I stopped, and I spun around. Yeah, only we are not saying goodbye forever, right, Principal? Right? Because next year, I will get sent down here, too, probably, or else maybe you and I will see each other on the playground, right? Principal did a chuckle. Right, he said. Hooray, I said. Hooray! Then I turned back around, and I skipped to room nine, my fastest, because maybe if I hurry, I could still sprinkle glitter on something. Chapter four, Cats and Gowns. 
I skipped in the door of room nine. Then my whole face got happy. Because guess who was talking to my teacher? It was Gus Maloney. That's who. And Gus Maloney is my favorite dinner. I zoomed right over to that guy. Gus Maloney, Gus Maloney, is it a joy to see you? I said. And so what brings you here anyway? Gus Maloney patted my head. He, I, I had an important delivery to make, sis, he said. Just then, my bestest friend, Lucille, came over, running up to me. She pointed at a big stack of boxes. It's cats and gowns, Genevieve, she shouted. Gus Maloney brought us cats and gowns. She twirled me all around. I heard him talking to the teacher. The cats and gowns are right in there in those boxes. Everyone is getting one for graduation, she said. I jumped up and down on that wonderful news. Because who doesn't love cats? That's what I would like to know. Cats and gowns, I hollered. Cats and gowns, hollered room nine. Mrs. sat down in her chair real slow. Then Gus Valoni patted her shoulder, and he said the word, good luck. Mrs. said for room nine to please stop shouting. I'm sorry, boys and girls, but Lucille did not hear me correctly, she said. No one in room nine is getting a cat and gown for graduation. Room nine did a loud groan. Then what are we getting exactly, I asked. Caps and gowns, said Mrs. You are all getting a cap and gown for graduation, not cat and gown. No, 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 said Lucille. I heard you, cat. I heard you say cat, teacher. I know I did. I know I did. Mrs. said for Lucille to hush. When she passed out the boxes to all the children, I looked inside my box, real curious. Then I kept looking and looking, because something was not right in there. My cap got run over by a truck. I said, I think, I said, it is a big square flat tip. Mrs. laughed. Then she came to my table, and she unfolded my cap, and she put it right on my head. Hey, what do you know? It fits, I said. After that, all of us put on our caps and gowns, and we skipped all around the room. Only not Lucille, because she was still mad about the cat issue, of course. Pretty soon, the bell was going to ring, and so Mrs. made us put our outfits back in our boxes. I'm going to let you take these home with you today, she said, but please do not play with them on the bus, and do not play with them at home either. These caps and gowns are white, okay? And white material gets sealed very easily. I know it, Mrs., I said. I know white material gets sealed easy. Because one time, my Griffin Miller spilled beer on his new white tie. And you can st st still see beer spots on that thing. Mrs. looked and looked at me. Then she sat back down on her desk very quiet. And she waited for the bell to ring. Chapter 5. A million bucks. We're going to leave off there. That was part one of Junior B. Jones is a Graduation Girl. If you like part one, you can read part two. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and read all our other books. Bye.